we continue from the young person who needs to work hard. He told me that eventually, he began to slack off. To motivate himself to continue working hard, he bought many books but rarely read them. He also got a gym membership but never went to exercise. He made many plans but never executed them seriously. Have you ever felt that sometimes he is more like performing a behavior art called effort? Yes, he doesn't really want to continue working hard but hopes to satisfy his idea of should work hard by posing as if he is working hard. From real effort, to pursuing the state of effort, to pursuing the feeling of effort, effort gradually becomes an imitation of effort. This is the difference between the self under the coercion of should thinking and the self under natural state. Should thinking leads to a black and white mentality. You may now understand why I say should thinking is a tyranny on the self. Because should thinking hinders our true emotional expression and causes our behavior to deviate from the essence of things, becoming a kind of imitation. In fact, the influence of should thinking goes far beyond this. Should thinking not only affects our emotions and behavior, but also affects our thinking, causing a black and white mentality in our thoughts. I once had a visitor who believed she was a kind person, which was her ideal, should self. One day, she passed by the school gate and saw a beggar asking for money. She hesitated and did not give any. Originally, this was a small matter, but she felt very guilty and kept thinking, Am I not kind enough? Behind her guilt was that should thinking of I should be kind, and closely related to this should thinking was the black and white thinking of if I don't give money to the beggar, I am not kind. Many of our troubles are caused by the black and white thinking of should thinking. Why does should thinking lead to a black and white mentality? If we follow our feelings, they are often very complex and naturally flowing, with many gray areas. Sometimes we may have a kind heart towards a beggar on the street, and sometimes we may turn a blind eye or even feel a bit disgusted. These are our true feelings. However, if we judge based on should rules, it will be different. Should rules only have compliance or non-compliance, adherence or non-adherence. Either I am a kind person or I am not. Either I work hard or I don't. Because rules are inherently black and white. Once we use idealized rules to limit and judge ourselves, our thinking becomes rigid and we find it difficult to tolerate parts of our feelings that do not conform to the rules. We distort our emotions to make them conform to the requirements of should. Therefore, should thinking not only hinders our true emotional expression, but also solidifies our thinking. Now that we know the nature of should thinking and the harm it brings, have you ever thought about why we fall into should thinking? Why do we become more and more trapped in it, even making this should thinking our default way of thinking. Here, I would like to introduce the theory of psychologist Karen Horney. She said that people fall into should thinking because we constantly seek external standards of the self that others will love, in an attempt to create an ideal self based on this standard. This ideal self is usually perfect, intelligent, beautiful, excellent, and flawless. When we compare our fantasy self with our real self, we feel like a fake. Therefore, we try to maintain the image in our fantasy, afraid that others will see the real self behind the fantasy. These ideal selves do not come from our real self-experience, but are built up by many rules such as I should work hard and I should fall in love. In order to protect this ideal self in our fantasy, it becomes very rigid and rejects emotions and feelings that are different from this should self. In this way, they are dominated by these should rules and become puppets under the should rules. So, how can we break free from should thinking and escape this tyranny? It's not complicated, just to find our feelings. After all, although feelings are vague, they are the real things. Of course, it is not easy to do this in the real world, and we need to master new thinking tools. Don't worry, in the second half of this chapter, I will teach you these thinking tools.
In summary, today we talked about should thinking on the self. We first thought about the nature of should thinking. Should thinking is actually a way of thinking that replaces spontaneous action with other people's standards. Then, we thought about why should thinking is a tyranny. Because it not only hinders our true emotional expression, making our behavior a kind of imitation, but also solidifies our thinking, causing a black and white mentality in our thoughts. When we set life goals based on external standards, it is easy to become a prisoner in the cage of should thinking, no longer able to see the grayness of the world or have the flexibility of thinking.